So I'm recording now. So I record so you guys can refer to the problems and all the things back later on, okay? So let's first go over an overview of this course. So as you can see, I've planned out every week of this course. Um, and as you can see, there are lots of different topics we're gonna do in, uh, in math, okay? And a lot of these, I'm gonna relate them back to the Math Counts competition because these are what I think um, the most prominent topics that you're gonna look at, okay? So we got quadratics, circles, geometry, counting and probability, okay? And please note that this might change, all right, based on how we go through the course, how I, like how fast we go through, and additionally, uh, when I get a feel for um, what level you guys are at, then this might change, but this is what I have for now, okay? So for homework this week, I'm going to send out a placement test, uh, or not, not really a placement test, but like an exam, not, not even an exam, like a worksheet that you guys are gonna fill out and send it back to me, and I'll get a good idea of what level you guys are at, and I'll adjust the lesson plans to fit your levels, okay? So now let's go on to what is Math Counts? So Math Counts is a middle school math competition, which means that it's only for kids in grades six to eighth grade. So this means that if you're in fifth grade right now, unfortunately, you won't be able to participate in Math Counts this year, but if you prepare this year, then you'll be ready next year, okay? So Math Counts is a really, really exciting math competition and it has four stages it's divided into four levels and you have to go through each level to uh, like advance on okay so the first stage is the school stage which obviously starts in your school okay once you pass the school stage you go to the chapter which is kind of like a regional stage then you go to the state the state is where all the kids from the top students from the whole state participate together um, and then they take the best out of the state to the nationals, and then at the nationals, they will figure out who is the math counts champion, okay? So math counts, it tests a lot of things, okay? It has many different types of exams inside it. So it's gonna test your problem solving skills, um, your speed math skills, your endurance skills, how long you can keep going while doing math. Um, and it tests a lot of things. And it's, even if you don't get to nationals, for example, it's really good practice for doing math later on, all right? So I think Math Counts is really fun and exciting. So for me, I did Math Counts in seventh grade, and well, I did it in all three uh, years in my middle school, but in sixth grade, I did not pass the school round, so I didn't even get to go to chapter. In seventh grade, I went to chapter, but didn't get to go to state, and in my eighth grade year, I did go to state, and um, I got eighth place individual there, okay? So as you can see, Math Counts is kind of like a scale where you can measure your improvement over the years in middle school, okay? So as I said before, there are four types of contests inside the Math Counts competition. These are different types of tests you will be going through, okay? So the first test is called the sprint round. And the sprint round, I write it here. The sprint round is 30 problems in 40 minutes. This, this, this round is actually the one that takes the most amount of time and no calculator is allowed. Okay, so the sprint round really tests how well you can keep doing math for a long period of time, like your endurance. It can also test your accuracy because you have to do a ton of problems without a calculator. All right, and as with all the math counts tests, the sprint round also tests your problem solving skills. Okay, so after the sprint round, oh, just before we go on, the sprint round is for an individual. You're by yourself, no one can help you. <laughs> individual, okay. So the next round is the target round. And the target round has eight problems in total, but they're given in pairs. And each pair is six minutes long. So basically, for the target round, um, the administrators, they give you, they first give you two problems and a pair, and you get 
six minutes to do just those two problems. And then you turn it in, and then you get two more problems. And you keep doing that back and forth until you've done all eight of the problems. So there are like four separate rounds of problems inside this target round. And this one allows calculator. So the target round uh, helps you practice your calculator skills. Some of the problems, they're designed so that calculator should be used for the target round, okay? And the target round is also an individual round. You're gonna be doing it by yourself, right? And then the third round is called the team round. And by its name, we know that the team round is done by a team. This one is not individual. And this is done by four students, a team of four students. They work together, okay? They can collaborate, they can talk together. Uh, 10 problems in 20 minutes. So the team round is kind of like a test of your teamwork, how well you can work with others, okay? And in the team round, all of you get calculators. So allow calculator. And the final round inside um, the Math Counts competition is the countdown round. And the countdown round is the most exciting of all the rounds. So they take the 16 top individuals. They take the scores from the sprint and target rounds, and they, um, they figure out who are the 16 top individuals. Okay, and then those 16 people, they compete together in a bracket style tournament. Just like March Madness, right? Yes. So you start out with 16 people, right? And then it narrowed down to eight, to four, to two, to one, okay? And in the countdown round, this is really a test of your speed math skills. As in the countdown round, we take two people at a time from the 16 top individuals. They go head to head live in front of everyone else at the Math Counts competition. They go ahead and each of them has a buzzer. Okay, and when, and the, then the, um, the competition administrators, they will put a problem up on the screen and whoever finishes the problem first, well, they get it right. So they have to buzz in, okay? And it's very exciting. It's almost like, um, I don't know, what is it? Like the spelling bee, okay? It's very intense. And the countdown round is best out of three. So they'll, they'll give you guys, uh, if you go to the countdown round, they'll give you three problems and you and someone else will do those three problems and whoever gets the most out of those three is moves on to the next round and the other one gets eliminated. Okay, and the countdown round is very fun and intense. Okay, so the countdown round, there's no calculator. We only get one minute per problem. But the one minute uh, time limit is actually much more than what people normally take on the problems in the countdown round. People normally take like five seconds, 10 seconds on each problem. And like, you gotta practice a lot with your speed math skills to get really good at the countdown round. Okay, so those are the four different types of rounds inside um, the Math Counts competition. And every single level, the school, chapter, state, and nationals, on a normal Math Counts season, Every single level is going to have all four of these competitions. Okay, so you're, all, you're going to do all four of these over the course of a day. And the countdown round is obviously the last one because they need to score the sprint and target rounds. Okay, so that's the general feeling of what the types of contests are. So since there is the coronavirus, this year the math count season is working a little bit differently. Okay, so let me trace your path through this season. So at the first level, you, this is represents your school, okay? All the kids at your school, they go into a tryout in October. All the kids in your school, and they participate online, right? Because if you can't meet in person, online tryouts for the Math Counts team, okay? Because the school can only take 15 people maximum to the chapter round, okay? So the school can only take 15 people, so they have to do um, uh, a tryout, okay? So the top 15 students in, 
in the whole school, the top 15 in the entire school. So if you're in sixth grade, you're competing against the seventh and eighth graders right here, okay? So 15 people max per team. And then once they figure out who are the people going to the chapter competition, they send the people to the chapter. And let's say this is the chapter. And the chapter is also online. And because of this, we cannot do the team and countdown rounds in the chapter round. Since it's online, obviously you can't participate in the team. And due to like maybe your Wi-Fi might go wrong, they're not going to do the countdown round either. Okay. So at the chapter round, there is only going to be sprint and target this year. In a normal math count season where it's in person, they're going to do all four of them. But unfortunately, this year, since it's online, they will not be able to do the other two. Okay, so you will be only doing the sprint and target rounds at the chapter round. And then they're going to take the top 20% overall at chapter or the number one person in each school. Okay, and they're going to advance to the chapter invitational. So what the chapter invitational is, it's a new thing added specifically for this year because they need more competition rounds to narrow people down. On a normal competition round, like in person, they're gonna go straight from chapter to state. But this year, they're gonna have to go to chapter invitational first, okay? And at chapter invitational, I don't really know the specifics about who advances to state, but I believe it should be around um, top 10%. Okay, they haven't released the specifics yet. That's gonna be around top 10% at Chapter Invitational to go to state. Okay, and at state, state is also online. So all the competitions that are online this year will not be having the team and countdown rounds, unfortunately, okay? So there's only gonna be the sprint and target rounds for all three of these rounds, okay? Chapter, Chapter Invitational, and state. So when you go to state, Again, there's going to be sprint and target, and they're going to take the top four students. They're only going to be able to take top four, okay? So it gets really, really competitive. They're only going to take four people. And uh, for me, I, I didn't really miss it that by, like, I missed it by four spots, okay? I got eighth at state, so um, it was a little bit sad but that's totally fine, okay? So they're gonna take the top four people at state and fly them to the nationals competition. And the nationals competition is in May. And by this time, they assume that the coronavirus is gonna be gone by then. So the nationals competition is in person this year. And they're gonna be doing all the rounds, sprint, target, team, and um, the countdown round. And at the nationals tournament, the winner of the countdown round is crowned the, the math counts champion. Okay, so the winner of countdown round is champion. Remember that to get into countdown, you, you have to be the top 16 individuals already. So by the time you get the countdown, all the people there are gonna be the best in the whole competition. So it gets really competitive and really intense, and the people at the Nationals Countdown, they usually do the problems in like one or two seconds, okay? And I think it's, I personally think it's unbelievable how they can do it that fast, all right? So that's generally how this year's Math Counts season is gonna work, okay? And I remember there was this one person back a few years ago, his name was Luke Robotai. I think you might've heard of him before. And he's literally a genius. He won the Math Counts competition. He won the champion two times in a row. He was the first person to do that. So he did it in seventh grade and he did it in eighth grade. And now after he's doing Math Counts, he's doing the high school math competitions and he's like literally top, okay? So the Math Counts competition, once again, it's just for middle school, but it's really, really good preparation for high school math competitions, all right? So even if you don't get as far as nationals in math counts, it's totally fine because you're going to be getting really good practice and it's going to be a lot of fun uh, as well. All right. So that's how this season of math counts is going to work. So now I'm going to go on to what I like to call focus areas. And these are basically the areas in which the problems that math counts can be divided into. So 
we have four categories here. Algebra, number theory, geometry, and then counting and probability. These are the four main categories um, that the problems can be grouped into. All right, so we're going to go over uh, uh, topics in each of these units uh, later on in the class. So I'm going to be telling you guys what part, what unit each class belongs into. And if you're struggling with that, then you can uh, know what you should focus on later on. Like you might be uh, not really good at ratios. So I would tell you, hey, you can go study a little bit more algebra. So these are the four main focus areas that the problems can be divided into. All right, so for today, I'm going to have you guys do a little bit of practice, get a feel for how the problems work, okay? And so let's go on to these problems. So first of all, I have four algebra questions here. If you don't know how to do these, that is totally fine because I'm going to be teaching you uh, how to do these, right? So the only reason I have these here is so that you can get a feel for how the problems will work, how, what they look like, okay? So once again, if you don't know how to do these right now, it is totally fine, but I'm gonna have these here just to get, give you a feel for how the math counts problems are given and how they work, okay? So I'll give you guys uh, around I don't know, eight minutes, eight minutes to work through these. If you don't know them, that's totally fine, but give your best shot at it. And when you get your answer, you can chat that to me. That's how I normally do my classes. And when you chat that to me, I can tell you if you're right or not, okay? So I'll give you guys eight minutes, work through these. Once again, if you don't know how to do it, that is totally fine, okay? Just give your best shot at it. Uh, it's just to give you a feel for how the math counts works.
Oh, uh, hello, Katie. Um, so right now, I'm giving you guys um, a few algebra questions. So as I said earlier, there are four to main topics that you're going to be seeing in the math counts competition. There's algebra, number theory, geometry, and then counting and probability. Okay, so um, generally, if you missed the, the first part of the class, I'm going to upload it to YouTube later on. So later on, you can, of course, you can watch the recording of the class on YouTube. Okay. So right now I have these four algebra problems to get a feel for how the math counts uh, questions work. So if you don't know how to do these, that's totally fine. But give your best shot at them. And um, I'm gonna present solutions in two minutes. Okay, so I hope you guys work through the problems. And if you're still stumped, that's totally fine uh, because that's why you're here, right? I'm gonna teach you how to do these later on in class. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about how to do these. So for the first one, you're gonna, let, you're gonna learn later on the strategies you'll use to solve equations. And what I like to say is there is an order of operations for what order in which you should unpack your equations. So the order is called SADMEP. That's what I like to call it because it's the reverse of PEMDAS. You can see how it's opposite. And SADMEP is what I like to say um, how you would solve equations because as you can see here, this X is attached to a plus two and a divided by five, okay? So what we should do first, well, Sometimes we don't always follow SADMAP because if you want to unpack this plus two first, then it's a little hard because we have a five right here. So before SADMAP, what I like to say is we unpack fractions. So the order in which I want you guys to solve equations, I'm going to talk about this later on, is that you first unpack your fractions, then you do SADMAP. So to unpack the divide by five here, I'm going to multiply both sides by five. So we're going to just get x plus 2 equals 9 times 5, which is 45. Now we're going to use sad map. So we got to get rid of this plus 2, which is attached to our x. So if we subtract 2 from both sides, we get rid of that plus 2. So all we get is x equals 43. And that's what x is. Okay. And you can plug 43 back into the original equation to see if you're right or not. And that's always a good strategy to check your answers. Because this type of problem, you're going to see it a lot on the sprint round. So it tests your endurance and your accuracy. So if you were tired by the end of it and somehow you messed up in the equation, then it's always good to check your answer by plugging the value back into the equation. So the next one, a word problem. So these two stalactites and stalagmites uh, grow towards each other and then they will meet. 
and we want to find how long it takes. Well, there's a formula called D equals R times T. Okay, this is the distance rate to time formula. I'm going to tell you guys this later on in our rates and ratios class. But the distance of something travels equals the ratio, oh, no, not the ratio, but the rate in which they travel multiplied by the amount of time it takes. Speed equals distance times time or something. Yes. Yeah, same thing. Okay, so instead of speed, we did rate. So to we want to find time. So we let's just divide both sides by time. Wait, we want to find time. So we got to isolate it. Okay, do you have a question? Um, yeah. So, like, how does stat map um, affect anything in problem one? It actually doesn't affect your answer at all. If you did it in a different order, that would be totally fine. But sad map is the easiest way to do the problems, okay? So okay. first you do subtraction, then you do whatever. But okay. yeah, it's just the easiest way, okay? You could you could do it in any order you want, but it, um, it would be a lot harder, okay? So to find time, we divide both sides by R to get rid of it. D over R equals time. So to plug in, we're just going to plug in our distance and plug in our rate, and we'll get our answer. So the distance in the travel is 10 feet, but the rate is in inches. So let's turn the feet into inches. We know that there are 12 inches per foot. One foot. That's not a foot. One foot. So 120 inches for 10 feet. So the distance in the travel is 120. The rate, so what is the rate at which they go towards each other? Well, every year the stalactite goes downward this much, the stalagmite grows upward this much. So the distance between them that is changing is 0 0.004 added to 0 0.006. Because every year the stalactite goes some distance towards the stalagmite, and the stalagmite goes up some distance towards the, the stalactite. Okay, so we add both of their rates to get to the total rate like the total rate at which their distance is changing. So if we add these, we're going to use our added decimals. We're just going to have 0 0.01. So that's the rate. So let's plug it in here. Now all you need to do is solve for time. And when we divide by decimals, I'm going to teach you guys this later on, the strategy we have is to get rid of this decimal in the fraction. I don't know what that is, right? So how do we get rid of that? We can multiply the top and the bottom by 100. As you can see, our 100 times 0 0.01 is just 1. So the fraction, and since we're multiplying by 100 on both top and bottom, it doesn't change the original fraction. So we're going to have 1, 2, 0, 0, 0 over 1 equals time. Oh, so that's just 12,000, 12, right? So this is the answer, 12,000 years. OK? So some of the strategies you need to use are turning word problems into equations that you can then do math with. Next one is actually an order of operations kind of problem. So if you don't know what this thing is yet, this is called a cube root. And whenever we have a cube root on something, it says we want to find the number that multiplies by itself three times to get to whatever's in here. For example, the cube root of eight is two. Because if we multiply two by itself three times, we get it to eight. Okay, uh, similarly, the cube root of 27 is three because if we multiply three by itself two, three times, three times three times three, we get the 27. Two times two times two, eight. So that's what the cube root means. And we want to find the cube root of eight to the fourth. So on our first class, exponents, I'm going to be telling you guys what exponents are. Okay, so an exponent basically says that we're going to multiply this number by itself four times. So negative 8 to the fourth is negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8. And do we really want to solve that? No. That's going to take so long, and it's going to be a huge number by the time we solve it. And that's, we obviously don't have that much time on the sprint route, right? So we got, we got to figure out a smarter way to do this problem. So we're going to learn later that the square root, the cube root here, and the exponent inside, they can be switched around. So I can take the exponent outside of the cube root. So we can rewrite this as the cube root of negative eight to the fourth power. We can take the exponent out of it. 
Well, we know what the cube root of negative eight is. We can just do a little bit of uh, guessing and checking. It's going to be negative two because negative two times negative two times negative two gets you to negative eight. Negative two to the fourth now. Well, we know that. We all you need to do is multiply negative two by itself four times, 16. Okay, so in this problem, we had to rewrite the um, we had to rewrite the problem so that it was a lot easier, right? Because if you were to do negative eight to the fourth power, that would take forever. So one critical part about algebra is that you need to know the smart way to solve a question. So now for the last one, this is the easier one. If a bat catches a total of 560 bugs in seven nights, how much bugs did the cat bat catch on the fifth night? Well, we just need to figure out how many bugs this, um, this bat caught every night. Well, that's just going to be seven, 560 divided by 7, 80. Okay, so that's going to be the answer because this is how much bugs the bat caught on the fifth night, right? Because every night they just catch 80. So on the fifth one, that's also 80. But the thing is, this problem might look easy at first, but this is actually one of those problems where the math counts people, they put it in to trick you. Because when I did this problem, I did this one quite a while ago, I thought it said, how many bugs in total did the bat catch by the fifth night? So by the fifth night, how many bugs did this bat catch? So that's what I thought it meant. So I did 400, and that was wrong, okay? So some of the problems are really easy. They look really easy, and they are really easy, so that you will, um, you're gonna make mistakes, right? You're gonna make, either make a reading mistake, or you're not gonna look at your, um, your, your values carefully, and you're gonna get it wrong. So that's kind of like the tricky thing that the math counts does. They give you a really easy problem so that you overestimate um, your, your answer, right? You're like, oh, that problem's so easy. There's no way I got it wrong. So you're not really gonna guess, you're not, gonna, you're not really gonna proofread your answer or check it at all. So this is one of the types of problems where you need to be really careful. Okay, so those are the four algebra problems. These are basically what algebra will be like on the math counts competition. So let's do some number theory. So number theory, if you haven't done number theory before, number theory is basically, um, it's not really like algebra, it's like the theory of numbers, like how do numbers work, okay? So here are three number theory problems. I'll give you some time to do these. And remember, if you don't know how to do these, that's totally fine, okay? It's just to get a feel for how the problems work, especially if you haven't seen any number theory before. Yeah, so when you get your answer, you can privately chat that to me and I'll let you know if you're right or not.
All right, one more minute. All right, I'm gonna go through these problems now. So how many multiples of eight are less than 67? Well, what are multiples of eight? Multiples of eight are eight multiplied by an integer. So eight times one is eight, 16, 24. Those are all multiples of eight. And the biggest multiple of eight next less than 67 is 64. And that will be the eighth multiple. Okay, so there are gonna be eight multiples of eight less than 67. So x and y are positive integers such that x, y equals 100. What's the positive difference between the maximum and minimum possible values of x plus y? Well, we want to find x, y equals 100. So let's first find what's the maximum possible value of x plus y. And well, we can just test out numbers, right? We can have 1 in 100. We can have, uh, what is it? Two and fifty. Uh, we can have four and twenty-five, five and twenty, and then we have the last one is ten and ten. So if we write out all the possibilities, this makes it a lot easier for us. Okay, so if we look at these, let's then group them a little bit. So which one has the biggest value of x plus y? Well, it's one in a hundred. That's one hundred one. Which one has the smallest? Well, that's ten and ten. 20. I'm going to find the difference, 81. Okay. So sometimes if you don't know what to do, then just write out some of the possible values. Okay. So now the last one, we want to find the smallest integer made by these digits divisible by four and nine. So I'm going to tell you guys later about the divisibility rules for four and nine. For a number to be divisible by four, all we have to have is the last two digits divisible by four. So what that means is we can just write out possible values for the last two digits, right? We can have 12 is divisible by four. We can have 16, 52, 56. So those are the possible values for the last two digits. To make an integer divisible by nine, we have to have um, the digits sum up to a multiple of nine. Okay, so if we sum up all the digits, we should have a multiple of nine. So somehow we're going to have to have these numbers become a multiple of nine. Five plus six is 11. That's not right. Seven. Nope. Hmm. So it seems like what we need to do is that we want to minimize the hundreds digit. That is our final goal, right? So obviously, 11 is not going to work because, right, that's already over 9. Let's cancel that out. For um, the third one, 52, well, what number can we add to 52 to make it a multiple of 9? Well, 5 plus 2 is 7. To get to a multiple of 9, we have to add 2. So 252. Well, that's a possible value. Okay, this one might work. 1 plus 6, also 7. 2. Oh, 216. That's even smaller than 252. Finally, for Blank one, two is going to have to be a six, one, two, but that's not bigger, right? So the smallest number is 216. Okay, so sum of number theory is knowing how the numbers work. And secondly, you just need to guess. Sometimes you just have to guess and check. Okay, so um, I think the class is one hour, um, or is it 50 minutes? 
I'm not sure. Um, if you guys are okay with it, I'll just go ahead with the last two sections, geometry and counting and probability. All right, one more minute, because uh, how about we just do the the first two problems? Because I, I would like to get to counting probability as well. Okay, I'm going to explain these now. So the first one, if you don't know what a slope is, the slope of a line is, well, if, it, if the slope is m, then the slope of the line is the change in y over the change in x. So how much does y change per change in x? So to plug in values here, how much did y change from this point to this point? Well, y went from k plus 3 to 0, which means it changed k plus 3 minus 0. How much did x change? 0 minus negative 3, which is regular 3. So the slope is this value right here. And the, the problem also says that k is the slope. So k equals k plus 3 over 3. So now we can just solve for k, right? Multiply both sides by 3. We're using sad map. 
So 3k equals k plus 3. Let's move k to one side, minus k, 2k equals 3, k equals 3 halves. And the problem asks for a common fraction. So we have to keep our answer as this value. They're not going to take any other value. They're not, they're not going to take 1.5. They're not going to take 1 and 1 half. Okay, if you give the wrong form of answer, then they're, gonna, they're not going to count it. Okay, so that's, that's the bad part about math counts. They have to have your answer in the exact form they specify in the problem. Okay, so I'm not going to go over the, um, the answer to the second one because I would like to go to counting and probability. This is, in my opinion, this is the most fun of all the topics. So I'll give you guys the remainder of class to work through these, have a good idea of how they work. All right, so let me just go through, quickly go through the answers to the first one. So probability is basically the test of what is the chance that something happens? And there are two main ways to do probability. So first, so the first way is to use the formula. The probability of something happening is the number of success cases over num total number. Okay, we're going to go more in depth about this later on. So counting and probability is just a test of what is the chance that this thing happens? So the number of successes is that, well, how, how many ways can I get both heads? Well, it's only one way, right? Either I got heads, both heads, or I don't, right? There's not really any other way I can do it. So there's only one success case. How many total success cases? But I can list them out. We can have heads, 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 tails, heads, tails tails heads or tails tails so we got four total uh totals so the probability is one over four and using the same logic you can do all the rest of these problems okay so counting probability is basically um the uh, like a calculation of what's the chance something happened okay so i will send you guys a placement test later on okay so just to, just to get a sense of what level you guys are at so that's going to be out of this this today's class so thanks to you guys for coming and i'll see you guys next time bye thank you you're welcome thank you bye bye, bye.